Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the data. Hello everyone and welcome to The Shortcut. I'm trying to go with a shorter topic-based format that doesn't require a lot of time to check out. Let me know if you like the format in the comments below. This is a follow-on to my previous 8 steps to learn something video, so I'd suggest at least checking out the steps in that video before coming back to this one. In this shortcut, I'm going to talk about how I learned to build networks in Terraform. Still not an expert, but I think I have enough technical proficiency to get things done, and I'd like to share my process and see if it helps anyone else. So in step one, I started just by looking at blogs and articles from people using Terraform already. Just wanted to see what they thought about it and how they got started with it, and basically still what it is. I moved on to some YouTube videos explaining what it is, what it does, really basic stuff about why anybody would want to use it. I also took a look at HashiCorp's Terraform page. Usually I don't start with the actual product page because I want a more unbiased opinion about what it is and what it's used for than I'll get from a vendor. In step two, I moved on to the tutorials. HashiCorp has a site full of them, so I really lucked out here. If there weren't actual tutorials available, I'd have started looking around for non-vendor tutorials, labs, training, stuff like that. Unless the product's brand new, someone out there has found a way to learn how to use it in a lab environment. I have a development Linux VM, so all I had to do was install Terraform on there and I was ready to go. Step three, I'm going through the tutorials. I started with the AWS specific ones because that was my personal use case, but after that I started branching out into the Terraform specific ones. Step 4, I decided to bid the tutorials farewell, start putting what I'd learned to use so I could quickly start identifying the gaps that I was going to have. I picked a challenge lab from Shazad Ali at Aviatrix who suggested building an AWS lab to understand AWS networking and get practice working with AWS as a provider. The lab didn't have many restrictions, but it did have a lot of work, so it was a perfect candidate to use for testing my Terraform skills in practice. And predictably, I got stuck. I mean, I got stuck hard. And I realized that to tackle this lab, I really was going to have to circle back to Terraform's built-in things like loops and resources and variables, and I was going to need to spend a lot of time with the AWS provider figuring all that out and how they related to each other. For my step 5, I went back to my basic Terraform code and I really started refactoring. I worked a lot on the relationships between the resources and how I could optimize my uh, HCL or HashiCorp language by using variables where I could so I could implement loops, streamline creating similar resources. Five VPC resource blocks shrunk down to one block, looping through some variables to create them. And this kind of work really optimized my code and also taught me a lot about the relationships between the resources. That was something I was going to need. Step six was a whole hell of a lot of trial and error. Um, I don't have any videos showing that part because hindsight is 2020, but you can be sure that I spent a ton of time on YouTube, on Discord, and on Google just trying to understand how Terraform loops work and how to refer to the resources that were created by the loops. In fact, I'm going to make another shortcut video just on that because I couldn't find any good resources out there beyond the bare basics. I did a ton of trial and error and my first breadcrumb to actually solving this problem was when my buddy Chris suggested I take, uh, make some resources with a loop and pay a lot of attention to how Terraform showed those in the Terraform state file and how it referred to them after they were created. And sometimes you just need a single thing to slide into place and it kind of makes the whole puzzle work and that's what really got me going down the right track. So look for that in a little while, because once you understand this part of Terraform, it really makes Terraform infinitely easier to use. By the time I got to step 7, I had all the rest of the, the lab built, and I started to focus on the Palo Alto firewall. So I'm a Cisco firewall jockey from way back, and I've never used a Palo before. I was constantly building and tearing down this lab with Terraform, but this was the next piece I had to figure out. So I spent some time reading the documents about how to deploy the firewall in AWS and through trial and error I probably built you know 10 versions of the firewall before I finally got it all to work right because I had to build the elastic network interfaces, update route tables and do other things in AWS and, and that really helped figure out how everything was related. So by adding that in and expanding outward my use cases I was really shining a light on all those gaps that I still didn't know I had and that I needed to close and that's how you do it. Step 8 
for the purposes of Terraform for me was when I, I decided that, you know, hey, I'll declare victory when I can build this lab 100% using Terraform and no manual configuration is needed at all. So uh, Chris had done some Palo bootstrapping before this, so he actually gave me a breadcrumb to the Palo bootstrap process. Um, I had to create an Amazon S3 bucket and create a, a config and everything. So after I went through that, uh, did a little bit of testing, I put the bootstrap together in Terraform. I put together the information for how to go get the bootstrap on the EC2 instance for the Palo. I hit the button and, you know, it took about five minutes, but I had the entire lab built. Palo was up, it was routing traffic, it was doing the NATs and everything, and I was done. Um, I was able to log into my Bastion host, SSH to one of my private servers, and get to the internet through that Palo uh, with no configuration at all. So that was my victory condition for me. I'd say I was at least proficient in Terraform if I could get to that, uh, that point. And the victory condition is really important. I think it's important to take something like my, my steps, and this is, again is my eight steps that work for me, right? Um, but I thought, you know, maybe it would help somebody else. And I think it's important to take that and, and take it out of the clouds, if you will, kind of like from an ephemeral, here's step eight, step one, step two, step three, you know, so on and so forth, and get it down to, okay, well, now apply it to a real world use case. What does that look like? And hopefully that will help people understand kind of my process and, and maybe even help help other people in their process. I'll place some links and stuff in the description if you'd like to try some, some of this out for yourself. And like I said, I'll make some uh, another video about Terraform loops and I'll probably make a video where I walk through this lab, although I'm not gonna show you everything that works because I wanna make it a bit of a challenge. Thanks for hanging out.